Hi, my name is Vishal and I'm a senior trainer in multimedia education. I have a 18 years of industry experience and let's get started with the video. From the day I started learning 3D softwares, I had uh, built a fascination towards procedural texturing and uh, I used to do a lot of uh, text procedural textures in Hypershade in Maya and uh, I, fe I felt uh, there's, there's a lot can be done in Maya's Hypershade in terms of procedural texturing. So always I uh, have had that feel but when I saw Substance Designer, I really, uh, uh, you know, um, felt that this is what uh, uh, Hypershade look, look, should look like. It's, uh, it becomes more powerful when you have more nodes, uh, whether it is arithmetic or textures and um, logical nodes. So when all that come, the texturing becomes so powerful and elegant. So uh, I, I built that uh, um, fascination towards this substance designer also. So I thought I'll um, make a series on 3D substance designer as well. So while I was exploring uh, this substance designer, the first thing I believe that I should know what all substance designer uh, uh, has to offer in terms of textures so I thought I'll cover one by one texture explore that and later use them in different scenarios and the series goes on uh, for good long time so this is a very uh, first step in, in, in making the designer tutorials so uh, I would like to uh, cover some textures here uh, firstly uh, so if you could see um, here we have uh, the textures okay if I exp expand this library okay so a lo lot of operators you got generators you got filters uh, material filters so we'll try to understand m m maximum number of uh, nodes w what we have here uh, till what we can generally um, try to understand so in that journey I would like to first start with uh, not with the function node but rather uh, generators we have uh, noises and patterns so I'll just scroll the uh, noises and then you got a preview here and uh, if you could see this is uh, a 3d Perlin noise so this is uh, uh, having a different icon comparatively to the other uh, procedural textures which was made by a lot of nodes again so uh, I was just exploring what's this but uh, before going into that if you know uh, the difference between 2d textures and 3d textures in in general whether you are in 3ds max or maya so uh, textures are applied to the object uh, on different uh, methods okay uh, how the texture is applied on object is basically sometimes you need to do uv unwrapping it's like a skin peeling off and then paint that skin and then wrap it around so uvs are one method and uh, you have uh, projection methods where uh, you text project a texture from a camera or some projectors like planar mapping spherical mapping not considering the uvs the another important method how we apply textures to the object is uh, by objects position in the 3d space so uh, there are only three um, right now in noises i could see there are three uh, 3d textures and um, um, <coughs> I'll just uh, take that 3D Perlin noise and then see it. double clicking any texture basically um, will show up the texture in the uh, view here in the 2D view but uh, this is not showing up um, the 3D texture is not showing up in the 2D view it's showing very flat and if you could able to see there is some attribute called scale and also you have uh, scale again which is size in x y and z uh, which controls the noise size but uh, why is it looking flat the reason is this is not a 2d texture and you're seeing it in a 2d space uh, this is completely whole different uh, concept put together but uh, um, i don't know uh, how we can use it uh, in this uh, uh, 3d designer but over a period of time it becomes uh, one of the tool ca which can be viewed and all so uh, I will just uh, try to create a node by pressing spacebar and then um, type 3d 
and then you got cube 3dg buffer node okay uh, this is like a position pass of uh, a cube okay so if you select that and then you can able to rotate it uh, the way you wanted okay uh, you could see orientation offsets are there uh, in both axes so you can uh, rotate this cube and we have the size which can be controlled for this cube okay so this uh, particular object outputs the position information normal information depth information and uv information so what is that i need to do is drag this position and connect it to the berlin noise and then you should able to see the texture is visible here so double click the berlin noise now if you if you could see the texture is applied on the object based on the object's position in the 3d space and we are able to view that okay so if i can uh, scale you should able to see the size of that texture is getting uh, affected and then you can generally uh, control x size and then y size and the z size okay so you have got all the axes say uh, if i have got a um, position pass rendered from a 3d software i can bring that to okay so i will uh, press space bar in the graph area and then type uh, bitmap and then from the file i will bring this image it's uh, available uh, if you just search position render pass so blender community it has got this image and uh, i got this image okay so i just directly connect this output and then you should able to see that texture on the object so what is it trying to do is it is trying to identify the points in 3d space um, in 2d image it's trying to identify a 3d space and it's roughly guessing that not roughly precisely in fact uh, the red color uh, represents the uh, actually it is not normalized that's the reason you're able to see some issue the normalized uh, thing will generally make um so uh, what what generally it will do is i'll tell you um if you just see the red channel from the center to the edge it gradually becomes red and in y axis it becomes green and the z axis it become blue so wherever that colors are composited you get that yellow magenta and cyan colors so this is not a normalized position so it is uh, like giving 0 1 2 3 4 5 it should be between 0 to 1 only so um what you are seeing here is this uh, uh result so maybe you can use this result somewhere uh, in in getting a fake uh, uh what you should say a fake uh, bevels or uh, no or details on some objects which create that roundness and still you have that texture on that roundness maybe you can do something like that so you have uh, three different variations here so you can try this one it has got more frequency in this and you got more details and then we have one more uh, 3d worldly noise and then you can check that also okay so it, it gives that nice nice cell sort of uh, information okay so this is not normalized that's the reason you're getting that all stretched uh, thing <coughs> zero uh, to one in the x axis should be black to red zero to one in y axis black to green so it's not normalized that's the reason you're getting that issue here but if not your default cube the 3d g buffer is sh uh, showing up the uh, result here and uh, as you as you could see you can generally explore all the attributes here it, it gives you that star effect and it gives that cube and then you get this again glares then you can control all that sizes okay and it it's working like contrast so you got lot of uh, different types of uh, textures uh, in itself okay that became a texture it's a 2d image again which is getting 3d information from some source 